Psalm 29 opens with David saying, Children of God, give the glory to the Lord because of who he is, because of all he's done. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Now, his holiness refers to his one of a kindness, right? He's in the category of one. There's no one like him, that he is perfectly loving and perfectly true and faithful and pure and powerful and compassionate and just. All that is good is found in him in perfect measure. There's no one like him. So worship him in the beauty of that one of a kindness. The glory that he deserves, don't give that to something or someone lesser that isn't in his category of one. The ancient world of David was full of idolatry. And in particular, it was full of worship of the Baals or Baals, uh, simply meaning master or lord. And people gave credit to these false lords for controlling rain or storms or seasons. They sang their own worship songs of sorts to these false gods. So in Psalm 29, David takes language from their worship songs and says, no, you don't get to give credit to the false gods for what the Lord has done. Some scholars say that in a, in a daring use of poetic imagery that David borrowed themes from the Canaanites. He didn't borrow themes. He was recovering them, taking them back. And he begins to worship the Lord, declaring the power of the Lord's voice. He says, it's Adonai's voice that's over the waters. It's the Lord's voice that's powerful and majestic. It's his voice that shatters the cedars. The pieces of woods that you use to form your gods, as enduring as cedar may be, the sound of his voice shatters it. Read Psalm 29. It's his voice, his voice, his voice. So David opens again saying, children of God, don't give credit and glory to the false gods around you. And it's a call that resounds to us today. Hey, children of God, are we giving God's glory to another? It's interesting to think about how even today we can get caught up in giving credit to things that aren't the Lord for the things he has done. We may not worship idols like they did back then, but we certainly have our modern day equivalents. The world is chaotic. What will set it right? What will bring peace? Too often we look for those answers in money or success, in nations, in governments or politicians, even in our own abilities. And then we put our trust there. But in Psalm 29, 10, it's, it's the voice of Adonai that sits enthroned over the flood. His voice over the chaos. Only his voice is strong enough to bring order in the chaos, to bring peace in the middle of our storms. Psalm 29 is this powerful declaration, giving the glory to the Lord, putting it right back where it rightfully belongs. Don't let the false gods take credit for the things that the Lord has done. Look to the Lord, it's his voice. His voice thunders over the waters, not our own efforts or the things we put our trust in. So here's the challenge for us today. Lord, is there anything that I've been giving glory to that that glory only belongs to you? Where have we placed our trust and our hope? Is our focus centered somewhere else when it should be centered on him? Today's the day to recognize that it's God's voice that has real power. His voice that speaks peace and strength and purpose into our lives. Let go of the distractions. Let go of the idols. Don't just let go of them. Chuck them. And tune into the voice of the one who rules over all creation. Say, Lord, today, I want to make you smile.